We've been looking at strokes, but let's look at the complements for fills, the brush tool and the eraser tool. With the pen and the pencil deal with strokes, the brush tool and the eraser tool deal explicitly with fills. And they have some quite unique features compared to other apps. Firstly, because we're dealing with fills, there's no smoothing option. Secondly, the concept of a fill in Flash isn't exactly the same as, say, Illustrator. For example, if you draw a paint stroke, like I've been drawing now, with purely a fill, it doesn't have a stroke at all. It's not a stroke set to none, it's simply not there. There are some controls at the bottom of the tool panel which govern how you create a brush stroke, but the important ones are the brush size, drop down, and the brush shape, drop down. The really interesting thing about working in Flash is that the size of the brush stays the same no matter how you've zoomed in or out of the document. If I zoom in a couple of times with Command Plus or Control Plus, the cursor stays the same size. So I'm effectively making a much smaller line than I did a moment ago at a lesser zoom using the same tool. Zoom then is critically important. You can't simply zoom in to add more detail at the same size because as soon as you zoom in, you're creating much smaller lines because your brush is much, much smaller, relatively speaking. You've got to be careful then about how you use these tools. There is a pressure sensitivity option. So if you have a Wacom tablet, then you can go thinner or thicker, depending on the pressure you're using. There's also a tilt option, which will let you change the shape of the brush if you're using a brush which will support that. So one of these calligraphic brushes will let me use the tilt of the pen to change the angle at which I'm drawing. To be honest, I would use Photoshop or Illustrator rather than to using Flash to create complex brushwork. But as with any of these tools, it's useful to know how they work when you just need something done quickly and natively in the app. If I create an area on an object with, which is closed, then this little area comes into play. Paint normals, fill, behind, selection, or inside. If I was to choose paint inside, and I'll pick a different fill color, if I start painting inside that little area, it'll detect that filled area and it will only fill in inside that area. The way it determines what's inside and what's outside is the center of the brush on that the start of that first stroke. So if I start there, it will determine that the blue is the inside and will fill that in. If I undo Command Z or Control Z on a PC, then I'll, I could go back to Paint Normal or Paint Fills. Paint Normal is probably what you'd want most of the time. Paint Fills is going to avoid going over a stroke. So if I paint over the stroke, it lands underneath. Paint Normal would break the stroke up. You can just see those bobbles on the edge there indicating that the stroke has been broken up. The reason you can't see this more clearly is the stroke has a high weight meaning that the edges are overlapping one another. For most purposes, I would stay with paint normal. Every now and again, it can be useful to limit your painting options, maybe to at the current selection. The eraser works in a similar way as the paintbrush. You've got size and shape controls, slightly more limited, and you do have an erase normal fills, lines, selected and inside, which work like the paint controls do and you can erase anything you like at will. Flash has always had this. In Flash 1, this was revolutionary to be able to erase vector art like this. Now that we have similar controls in Illustrator, I would probably be creating most of my vector art there. It's worth noting that each of these shapes that I've just created is a new vector path. And if I use the subselection tool, you see I do have Bezier handles around all of these objects. They can be modified just like any other handle. If I do want to adjust any of these shapes using Bezier controls, select them with the subselection tool, and then you'll see all of the points, the control handles around the outside, and adjust them if you need to.